I think, for Essence Fest when we came down and we did it for years, just continuing to do it. So we couldn't be prouder of you and all of your success. Thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome. So how are you today? I'm blessed. I'm doing amazing. Perfect. How are you today? I'm good. I'm so excited to have you with us today. Today is actually our first Monday Monday. So, oh. so it's wow. all about you. <laughs> yeah. I'm so I really want to speak. I really want to speak life into all of the young entrepreneurs, particularly black women who may be watching you or just anyone who's looking for encouragement on how they can get to the next step in their business. Because we've watched what you've done with the crayon case and all of your other auxiliary businesses um, to really be successful financially. And we want to take people through that journey. Okay, of course. Awesome. I'm yeah. So can you tell us what first inspired you to start your business? Well, first inspired me to start the crayon case was um, when I was getting booked a lot back in 2015, I, uh, it was hard for me to try to find MUAs in every city I was going to. So I wanted to learn how to do my own makeup. So I used to be on YouTube all the time, um, trying to learn ways to how to do my makeup, trying to find color, correct colors for my face. <laughs> be on Periscope and I was on live doing Periscope doing my makeup and I used to be messing my face up like it was so funny and everybody was laughing and as the months went by as the months went by I actually was learning and they was like oh you learn how to do this what you use and what you use and I'm like if y'all keep asking what I'm using I'm gonna start selling some stuff okay I initially was only supposed to come out with eyebrow gel and highlighter that was it and um then when I came out with it I made it a school thing because it's a, a cosmetic line dedicated to amateur makeup users, but it's, it's for professional use. So it's for the ones who want to learn how to do their own makeup, want to get into cosmetics, but they're afraid. So I made it everything a school theme. So it's like you're teaching yourself how to do your makeup so it can be fun. So even when you mess up, the products are so fun to look at and fun to have. You wouldn't mind trying it again because it's just See, fun. That's branding. So what she's talking <laughs> about, she branded her crayon case. That's one of the things that's so attractive about it is you look at that case and it's so cute that you, yeah. just, want to, you just want one, right? <laughs> right. Fun, like even if you mess up, you're like, oh no, like this is meant for me to mess up. I'm gonna try again. You know, so that's that, that was the whole thing. Yeah, that's phenomenal. So that's tip number one, everybody. Make sure that you brand your business and whatever your idea is because it can be a million different makeup kits or whatever it is that you want to sell. But if you brand it right, it will be attractive to people and people will come and they will buy it. Exactly. I agree. Exactly. So what was your first sign of success once you started the crayon case? Um, my first sign of success for me was when um, my palette was became a replica. And so many people went to remaking a palette. I mean, it was fake, but the, the fact that it went so viral and it was being made in China and it was selling it to other people. I, I felt successful, you know, <laughs> I'm like, for them to even copy my stuff and try to remake it, made it all wrong, messed it all up. I mean, it was trash. It was a trash pattern, but the fact that they try to steal my idea and, and remade it, I'm like, Oh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm successful. Like, yeah, you're, like you're on to something, right? I, I felt like I made something so fire so so creative that they stole it you know i mean they, they didn't get far with it because once people was buying a fake one they, they realized it wasn't nothing near my palette but yeah. to, i was i felt successful like okay they stole my stuff it must be popping so that's when that was for me that was my first big success moment with the crown case yes and it, it was popping because they did steal it imitation is the yes. best form of flattery so you are absolutely right <laughs> Did that encourage you to keep going or did, it, well, for one, how did you protect your business in that moment from people being able to steal it? Like, had it not been copyrighted yet? It was already copyrighted and it was already trademarked. But mm -hmm. the fact that by being China, you'll have to do a trademark in China as well. And it's, it takes so long to try to get a trademark in China. So it was like, I, I don't have time to do it. Like at the end of the day, the, it's not my original palette. It's not like they like they copying the same one. It was way smaller. The pigments wasn't the same. Like it was just a horrible, you know. So it just taught me to everything that I try to come out with to make sure I trademark it, to mm -hmm. make sure it's, it's mine or whatever. But um, it just taught me to kind of protect my brand more, and I, I protected everything that I ever came out with. So, but 
it was, I don't got time to play with China. China gonna do what they want to do regardless. It's what it is. We can't fight China. It, <laughs> we, China makes everything, so we can't fight it. So I was flat. Lit, yes. Did it encourage you to keep going to create new products? Yes, of course. Like every, it encouraged me to whatever I do, put my own spin on it. Like mm -hmm. I, I didn't come out with palettes. I didn't come out with setting powder. I didn't come out with, you know, a lot of brands sell this stuff, but make sure that mine stand out from other brands. Like whether it's the packaging, whether it's the quality, like whatever it is, make sure that it stands out. So it definitely made me be more, be more confident in whatever I come out with and make sure I put my own spin on it. Make sure it, it's real eye candy and it's, it's worth buying. Absolutely. Do you? So one of the biggest things about your business that I find unique is that you really learn how to use social media to your advantage. Can yes. you tell us how you took social media to the next level to really help to build your business? So when it came to the crown case, I used my my following to, to kind of promote the crown case. So basically, I targeted all the under like everybody know they got a lot of beauty influence. So I feel like the underdogs when um the underdogs get enough, you know like they just wouldn't get enough recognition. So I had the following they did, they had the, I did. So it was like I help each other. So I reached out to all the underdogs. I gave them free makeup, and I also told them, you know, if you, if you give me content, I give you exposure. So, and the thing was, I wasn't trying to put them in contract with me. I wasn't telling them that they only could work with me. The whole thing was for me to give them exposure. They give me content, and they get recognized by other beauty influencers, other underdogs, other big brands that will actually see them so they could get PR from other brands and get on their PR team. So I didn't want nobody to be officially for the crown case. I just wanted them to help me. Them. So that's how I use social media to, and my benefit. Like, I just wanted them to be, to have exposure. And they, and, and they were so great. Like, they was great at what they did. They, they, they do great makeup. And, like, they do great content, great videos. Like, they they just so, so great at what they do, but they just wasn't getting the recognition. So it's like, I helped them. They helped me. Yes, absolutely. Um, So the comments are saying that you're breaking up a little bit. Let's see. I can't see it, but the comments are saying you're breaking up a little bit. Okay. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so we're just going to keep it moving. Um, <laughs> so you use, so you really learn how to leverage other influencers to help to build and market your business. And one exactly. of the key things that I heard you say that stuck out to me is that you essentially kind of bartered stuff, like yes. you know, no money exchange, you know? Because sometimes a lot of people, you guys have to understand, and Super is saying it right now, you may not have the money, but maybe you have the relationships. She used her following to leverage relationships with other people who had followings or maybe maybe didn't have the following, but could still um, join in and use her makeup. So that's a really good and important tip. Exactly. Collaboration is key. Yes, it is. Absolutely. It is. So once you made that money, though, how did you reinvest it into your business or did you just go crazy? Oh, no. Everything that I made from the crown case, I put it directly back into the crown case. Like when I when I was making so much money at one time, I just kept buying inventory because I, I was taught that inventory is extremely, extremely important. So if I keep selling out of stuff, then I'm not going to make money like I could. So every time I sold out something, I just bought more, bought more, bought more, you know, yeah. so I put it right back into the brand. Like when it was talking about the million dollars, I was back broke in a few weeks because I put that directly back into the brand. You know, so that's what's on. Um, that was really important to me to whatever I do and reinvest it right back into my brand. Don't just go crazy. Don't go buy no cars. Don't go buy all this design and stuff. Put that money right back into the brand. As long as you put it back into your brand, you can make more money. Did y'all hear her? I know the new Dior collection, the new Gucci. <laughs> new Milano. I know you see it and you want it, but if you are trying to be an entrepreneur and really be about your business, sometimes you have to go without so that you can invest, you know, play the long game, ladies, play the long game, super play the long game, and look at her now. Exactly. <laughs> so one of the biggest things about being an entrepreneur and being a boss is everything is all on you. Mm -hmm. Mistakes, failures, even the success. But for you, what keeps you up at night about your business? So what keeps me up at night is I do follow a lot of um, 
a lot of makeup pages. I do, especially on Facebook. I'm like a lot of makeup groups, and they like they they really talk about things that they like, things that they want to do. So um, I just kind of like I I wasn't even interested in coming out with with many traveling palettes because I felt like if you, if you love makeup you're gonna travel with your big palette it don't gotta be small you know mm -hmm. but they talked about it so much and that's what made me come out with um what is it what's coming out that's what made me want to come out with the the miniature palettes right here oh, was it an exclusive what's what are we seeing it looked like notepads oh cute they were real small traveling palettes because they kept talking about how Oh, you know, like we need some small ones because we travel a lot, like especially for the traveling MUAs, you know. So I'm like, okay, well, since they keep talking about it, I might as well come out with something, you know. So that's <laughs> let what, me give you something, give you a little something. I just listen to what they talk about. I listen to what they say, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm just gonna introduce it to my to my brand and see if they like it. So I stay up literally, like just paying attention to what makeup artists talk about, what MUAs talk about, people that love makeup talk about, and I just apply it to my brand. Oh my gosh, please show that to us again because I want to stress one more time how Supa is a branding genius. Look at this. So these are the, the mini palettes. It's called notepads. You know, like the um the notepads you get at school. Fantastic. You, and each one of them, the, the colors show what, like what kind of colors will be inside. Like the red one, they have red shades. Okay. And they have purple shades. The orange one have orange shades. Blue, Girl, you got it. A little black. Take my buddy. Take my buddy. You got it. It's just so cute. I just want one. So oh, cute. So, so no pain. Yes. So I mean, you have so many wins, so many successes. But what was your first major loss with your business? My first major loss was me running out of inventory. Like okay. for Cyber Monday. Everybody thought it was it was a big it, it was a big deal for me, but I feel like it could have been bigger. When I made that million dollars in a in an hour, I'm like, damn, I could have made so much more money if I had the inventory, right? And I should have been more prepared because it is it's Black Friday, you know, mm -hmm. or Cyber Monday. And if I would have had way more inventory, I probably would have made two million, three million, four million, you know. So yeah. I'm like, I, I cried about it. I was so excited that I made so much money at one time, but I'm like, damn, I could have made way more damn money, you know, if I would have. So I ran out of stuff so fast. Even now, the the brand gets so much exposure as it grows. I still can't keep up with inventory. I, yeah. I be stuff inventory. I could buy forty thousand is fifty thousand is, and then once it once it drops and go on sale, I sell out. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I thought this was a lot. You know, like I thought this was a lot of product, and it really don't be a lot. You know, because mm -hmm. they have people who who just will, will just find out about your brand. They first time customers, and they buying a lot of stuff. You know? So I'm still trying to catch up with inventory. I'm not there yet, but I'm still trying. And I'm thinking I'm getting a whole lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff, but it's really not a lot of stuff because the brand is big. And I didn't yeah. even realize that I keep selling out stuff, you know? That's that humility that you have. And I have to say from personal experience, the first time that you came to Essence Festival, which was in 2018, I believe, we were overwhelmed. Like the staff, everyone was just like, wait, what's, what's happening? Because <laughs> her entire booth, you guys sold out so fast. It was just phenomenal to see. I mean, we were in your hometown of New Orleans, but beyond that, just your business has such a huge draw. So even from that, just seeing that with my own two eyes, I can only imagine what it's like when people have global access to the brand. Yes, exactly. I mean, I, I was happy, but I was upset too. I'm like, damn, we sold out of Essence. So how we sell? No, that's good. You want to sell out at Essence. You want to sell out at Essence Festival. That's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Um, so we see a lot of the comments are asking how, what, what advice do you have for a woman such as yourself when, before you actually had the successful business and you were just really thinking about how am I going to get myself into a better financial position? What advice would you give to someone who, or even yourself, give past Supa who was mm -hmm. just thinking like how am I going to do better how am I going to get to the next level give yourself that advice that maybe somebody else can hear that advice and, and grow from so one thing if it comes to finances if you already have a job and you're trying to step into entrepreneurship do not quit that job until mm -hmm. you lose that job as your step stone like do not quit that job you know everybody listen now social media make it seem like entrepreneurship is easy and it's not you know, and they make it seem like, you know, like when we, we may brag about how we didn't have no loans and we didn't have this, but we still had 
who still has social media to help us. So we're not going to make it seem like we have nothing, you know. But if you have a job, I wouldn't quit that job until I saved up so much money to where when it's time for me to quit, I'm ready. And, and, and I can miss out on that paycheck every week or that paycheck every month. Or, and even if you still, I will step into entrepreneurship with the job. Like, I will still keep the job just in case it don't go as I planned. You know, yeah. when it comes to finances, make sure you keep the income coming in until, until you are ready to, for your business to have the, enough income that your business is making more than what your job is, is, is making you. So don't, 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 let, don't let social media make you feel like everybody is ready. Uh, it's okay to quit your job and it's, it's okay to take risks. But don't yeah. stop. Don't stop you until that business is, is creating enough income way more than your job is giving you. And also, don't let what anybody else doing discourage you. Like, McDonald's not worrying about Burger King. I don't care who else selling makeup. I don't care who's selling palettes. I don't care who's selling beauty business. I sell it too. Think about it. When you buy something, when you buy makeup, you don't have one foundation. You have foundations from so many different companies. You got palettes from so many different companies. You got primer from so many different companies. Are they going to buy from you too? Like, they yeah. they buy from these big brands. They're going to buy from so many brands. When you go out to eat, like you're just not going to eat chicken from one place. You're just not going to eat pasta from one place. You're trying different stuff. Just because this one brand is doing it doesn't mean that you can't do it as well. Because we're going to buy from you. We're going to buy from you. We're going to buy from you. We're going to buy from everybody. So don't let nothing discourage you. Yes, there are hundreds of thousands of new customers being born every day. Okay? Exactly. Understand. <laughs> Makeup has been around since the beginning of the time. And it's yes. going to continue to be around. So do not be discouraged. Whatever it is that you want, whatever it is that's on your heart, you can do it too. Uh, Supa is living proof. Look, she's a branding genius. So I don't know if we're all branding geniuses like she is, but you can take that creativity that she has and try to build on it for your own brand. I want somebody, I want people to drop down in the comments and tell us what your goal is for your business. But in the meantime, Supa, can you describe to us what it felt like to make that million dollars in one day? Or was it an hour? It was, it was the first time it was nine minutes. The second time it was an hour. Well, I'm going to rewind. That's my rewind sound. So, tell, us, tell us one more time. The How first, long did it take you to make a million? The first time it was, well, I was, I was a millionaire in 2018. Be, be, before the, the, the million dollars in 90 minutes, I became a, a multi-millionaire in March of 2018. Okay, so period. She, already, she let us know. So I, uh -oh. I, I, I stand corrected, y'all. <laughs> Our sis said she was a millionaire. Yeah. Multi a whole multi. A multi-millionaire <laughs> multi in 2018. And then she also made a million dollars in nine minutes. No. Okay. 90, in 90 minutes. 2018, Cyber Monday 2018, I made a million dollars, 1.3 million in 90 minutes. And then March, before the tax sale, I made a million dollars in. It's hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> Why did it get so hot in here? So what did that feel like? I, I'm not gonna lie. I I cried. I listen. I don't know if I was crying because I was happy. I was crying because damn, I could have made my money with the inventory. <laughs> but I was I was just so I was so happy for myself, and I was just so happy with my everybody that helped me when it came to my staff. You know, because at, at the end of the day, I, I could never have done this by myself. The yeah. Crown Cake staff is is so important when it comes to the Crown Cake. I'm not there doing everything. My staff is so. For them to to make sure everything went smoothly, the shipping went smoothly. Like it was it was a, a great feeling for me. And then you know I have family working for me, so it was a moment that I could share with my family because they worked there as well. And it was just a, a a crazy feeling because I didn't think I was gonna make that much money. Like I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna have a two hundred thousand dollar day. I'm gonna have a two hundred thousand a day. <laughs> Look, <laughs> the fact that her her light goal is two hundred thousand dollars a right. day. Right, it's phenomenal. It's just phenomenal. Right, it just exceeded that. I was yeah. excited. It was. What amazing. was your first big day? My first, uh, to me, my first big day was my launch day. You okay. know, in June 2017, I think thirty-three thousand dollars the first day, and and I think I only had I only had seven products then. So I'm like, I was ha I thought to me that day was was very emotional for me because i'm like i made thirty thousand dollars girl y'all y'all not messing with me you know and i even realized to me that's no money no, <laughs> hold, hold on super <laughs> super now super now we got to be we got a goal set that is right. some money 
You're right. Don't worry, y'all. It's money. We know right. Super is on a different level. We can get to 30000 a day. It, for being a very first day and launch, nobody charged products. Nobody had it yet. So for being a very first day, that was amazing that for me. Was, right. You shut it down. So, right. <laughs> you shut it absolutely down. So I right. want to get on to talking about some fun stuff. So with all of this money talk, and I know that you're a savvy and frugal businesswoman, but what are some of your fun purchases? With business or with my life period? Well, since the crown case. Since the crown case. Since you started your business, what is your biggest purchases that you really were like, okay, all right, I, this is something I'm doing for myself? Um, probably this house. Oh. This house was probably, um, it, money wise, it was my biggest purchase. But it's we can hear the echo, so we know it's big. Because <laughs> it's echoing everywhere, it's just it's bouncing off the wall. So we know you got space. <laughs> Your feet. <laughs> <laughs> so money wise it was my biggest purchase because i'm like okay and i didn't even realize that i seen the home already this was around the time i was um i was sick you know i had a lot going on with my memory and stuff so i already seen the house a few times and i didn't know that like a, a whole year later when they told me like you already seen that house already and you said you wanted it then you changed your mind and you said you wanted it and then um when i actually bought the house january so it's been a year now since i've been in the house and so that was my biggest purchase because it was actually like I'm not gonna say it's my dream home, but it was big for me because I didn't think I would ever live somewhere like this, get a community like it's amazing. So that was big for me. But well, when it comes to the crown case, the biggest thing was when I bought my hair. That was extremely big for me because I um I, I wasn't planning on on really staying there. I thought it was too big. I'm like this warehouse is too big. I'm not gonna be able to to do everything I want as well. Like, it's, it's too much space for me. And then now, we, we, we over space. Like, I need a bigger warehouse at this point, you know? So, yeah. and then I bought the, I was in labor. You know, we done the odd time, my paper, they came to the hospital and and I was in labor. I was having contractions and I signed my paperwork while having my baby. So that's a, a big accomplishment for me because I'm like, okay, I bought my house. I'm having my baby. It was the same day, like my birthday and the day I bought the warehouse. So that was big to me because it was a special moment. It was a special moment with my personal life and a special moment with my business life as well. And you absolutely, like, just the gems and the keys that you're drop, dropping, you don't even really realize it. Like, what she just said to us is that when she was in labor, she was working. Yes. <laughs> she was working. So she doesn't stop working. And I think that that consistency and just being diligent about your goals and your business and not stopping. Like, it is important to stop and have some wellness for yourself. But what she's really talking about, she's super consistent, you guys. She's super consistent and focused on her business. Extremely. We just love, I, we just love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> what thus far is your proudest moment? Thus far, my proudest moment, oh, I would say to me, by me being so successful, my proudest moment is, is when I bought my mom her house. When I gave my sister a job, my cousin a job, my cousins a job, that was extremely proud for me because I'm proud of the highest paying job they ever had, you know, and I made sure that I wanted my family to be involved, but I picked the family members who was known for working, okay. known for the job, known, the, you know, like they ain't quitting no job because they, they don't like the manager, like, like they're going to stay there because they <laughs> so. I picked the ones who, who's just always, always about their business. So that was proud for me because they could, like, they could have been working for somebody else, only getting paid so small, and I the biggest, like, they don't salary. Like, this is, like, this job got them where they wanted to be in life. So that was a proud moment. Like my sister was my first, my first employee, and now she owns her own business, and now she didn't bought two houses. Like, just to see her like that i'm like it's amazing because i i know i know that if it wasn't for the like the crown case like really did everything they wanted to do in life they were able to travel they were able to, to 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 do what they want buy what they want and they blessed you know and and, and they, they did it without even saying oh i'm not gonna work for you you know like if they're gonna work for somebody else why not work for me you know and then also get paid to yeah. so to, then get paid the most so my products won't put my family on put my friends on making sure everybody around me is straight like they don't need me because they already got the business happy mind and yeah. I, 
helps me get where they at. And it's, it's, it's an amazing feeling for me because, like, we all popping. Like, we all got our own money. We all doing our own thing. I just be so proud to see them flourish and so proud to see them like they always want to do. I think it's amazing. That's what we love to see. So she put her hold. Hold on. We're not going to take a picture hold. She put her team on who she knew would be valuable assets in her business. So that's another major key. She said, she, she pointed that out. She said she, she hired her family members, but she made sure they were people that were dependable and that she could trust. So that is so very important. So be very mindful. You want to put people on, but you yes. want to make sure that there are people that are going to value your business and that you can trust with your vision. Exactly. Absolutely. So what are your next major goals for your business? My next major goal, what up with that? I see him in the building. <laughs> My next major goal is to have multiple streams. Multiple. Yeah. I don't want to just rely on the crown case. I want other businesses and I want those businesses to do just as well as the crown case. And I'm I'm already I already stepped into uh, another business as well, but I'm a co owner and I wanna put as much time as I put into the crown case and put it in that one because the crown case right now is on autopilot. You know, like it's, I got so many people working with the crown case to where like it, it, it runs its business by itself, even without my help sometimes. So yeah. I want as much energy that I put into the crown case into my, my new business as well and for businesses as well for it to do just as well. Fantastic. So we are so happy that you joined us today. I want you to let everyone know where they can learn more about you, your story, and your businesses. Well, they can follow me because follow I'm, her. <laughs> I'm on live all the time. Like I do this on live all the time. Like, I don't, I don't do classes or anything, but I get on live and I'm real personal with my following. So when they ask me questions, I answer them. I'm always on, I'm always on clubhouse as well. My clubhouse is the same thing as my Instagram name. So I'm always engaging when it comes to business talk. Not just business talk, but, you know, I'm, I'm real personal. So we talk about friends, we talk about family, we talk about relationships. I talk about all type of stuff. So you can follow me and every time I'm on live. If you have questions about anything, want to ask me anything, you can ask me on live and I'll talk to you. Well, thank you so much. And I just want to say to our audience who was not familiar with Supa before this live today, isn't she phenomenal? Can you believe that she made all these millions of dollars and that she has this amazing black girl magic energy and this branding expertise and she's not classically or as you would say traditionally trained to do this. She believed right. in herself and went after her goals and that is what we call black girl magic. <laughs> so thank you so much and I enjoyed talking to you. We're going to have to invite you back and maybe we can do it again. Okay, thank you for having me. You have a great day. Thanks, Supa. Bye.